One of the most inspiring stories to exist within the Naruto series is the story of Rock Lee. Rock Lee was a young man who, though he had the drive and passion to be a shinobi, did not possess the necessary control over his chakra to make use of any jutsu. Due to this, he trained day in and day out to become stronger to no avail. It was then that a particular Jonin who could identify with him took Lee under his wing and taught him the unique and powerful Eight Gates technique. The concept was that instead of molding one's chakra to make use of ninjutsu, one could open the gates and limiters within their bodies that could then allow that chakra to flow through with enough intensity to allow a shinobi to surpass their body's physical limits and take on superhuman strength, speed, and agility. It was through use of this technique that Rock Lee became a legend and proved that anyone could be a shinobi if they have a strong enough will. But the entire time I watched this, I couldn't help but wonder, what if Naruto were like that? What if he couldn't make use of his chakra? What if Naruto had to learn the Eight Gates Formation? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you are subscribed, and with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Naruto had failed once again. He sat upon the swing, watching the others as they got their headbands and celebrated with their parents. Naruto was not so lucky. He did not receive a headband, nor did he possess a parent with which to celebrate. Naruto could not perform jutsu like the others. When asked to use transformation jutsu, he could only come out with a heavily deformed, almost cartoonishly hilarious mockery of his target's true form. And when asked to make clones, each one almost seemed to be sickeningly incomplete. He couldn't even mimic his own appearance, let alone anyone else's. He had failed so many times that the academy was considering expelling him. To Naruto, that was a tragedy beyond measure. For a boy hated by all, he sought only to be respected, and to be respected, he felt he needed to become the greatest Hokage of them all, but that was easier said than done. For him to become Hokage, he would need to become the greatest ninja in the village, and to become a ninja at all, he needed to pass the academy's final exams. But he kept failing, and now it looked as if he would never get the chance to pass. Tears dripped from his face as he watched his dreams go up in smoke. He questioned to himself why he was alive at all. Why had he been born into this world if all he was going to receive was suffering and sorrow? He had nobody to love him and nobody to cheer him on. He just wanted to be acknowledged. He just wanted someone to tell him that it was okay to be alive. He just wanted people to be happy that he was around. But now it seemed this would never be the case. He wanted to lash out. He wanted to rage, the pain of rejection and the powerlessness of knowing he could do nothing to change it and that nobody cared enough to allow him to try. He hated it all. He hated it, but unbeknownst to him, someone watched him from a distance. A man approached. Naruto did not look up at him. The voice spoke. What's wrong, little shinobi? Did you not pass the test? Naruto shook his head. I'm not a shinobi yet. I didn't pass. The voice laughed. Ha 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 ha! Being a shinobi is not something anyone has to validate you for. It's not something you earn on a piece of paper. Being a shinobi is a way of life. To never give up. Shinobi never give up. Naruto sniffled. I don't want to give up, but they're gonna make me if I can't pass the test the next time I take it. The man knelt down. Ah, I see. What a dilemma. Naruto tried to hide his face. I don't want to fail. I don't want to give up on my dream. I want to become the greatest shinobi in the world. How much do you want that? The man asked. A lot. What would you give to accomplish that dream? Naruto turned to look at the man head on. The man had a bowl cut and wore a green jumpsuit. Naruto spoke. Anything. The man then smiled. Maybe I can help you. That is, if you're not afraid to put in the hard work. Naruto nodded. Please. The man laughed. Ha ha ha! Then we'll begin our training tomorrow at the crack of dawn! I want to see you at the training yard before the rooster even crows! The man began to walk away. Naruto called out to him. Wait! I never even got your name! The man turned back with a sparkling smile. It's Might Guy! I'll see you tomorrow! Go home and get plenty of rest, you're going to need it! And from there, Naruto began training with Might Guy. Might Guy pushed Naruto as far as he could. Do 1,000 push-ups all in a row, Might Guy commanded him. At first, Naruto was confused. In a row? Without stopping? Might Guy nodded. Did I stutter? Do it all in a row. Naruto shook his head. But I can barely do 100 with breaks every 10. 
Mike Guy laughed. Ha <laughs> ha, if you can't do a thousand push-ups in a row, that's okay. You'll just do a thousand laps around the yard. And if you can't do that, then you'll do a thousand curls. And we'll keep going until you either succeed at doing one thousand reps of something or you collapse. Naruto seemed to go pale. Uh, I... Mike Guy cocked his head. Oh, are you not willing to work for your dream? If not, we can stop right here and help you find a new one. Naruto shook his head. No, I can do it. Naruto then hit the ground and began doing as many push-ups as he could. To his credit, he managed to get to 45 before his arms gave up completely. Mike Guy walked over to him. Good. That was a great first attempt, but you did fail, so now you need to do 1,000 laps. Get to it and maybe we'll finish before supper. Naruto rolled over. He tried to catch his breath. He was beginning to think that this man was trying to kill him, but he couldn't stop. He needed to do it. He tried a thousand laps and stopped on the 25th. From there, Mike Guy challenged him to do a thousand sit-ups, but Naruto once again stopped at about 50. Pull-ups were next. Give me 1,000, Naruto. I know you can do it. I believe in you. Naruto did 12 before falling off the bar. He then began trying curls. He got to about 16 before he failed at that too. This went on through a good bit of the day till about lunch when Mike Guy would pat Naruto on the back and tell him that he did good and would offer him something to eat. Naruto felt like an absolute failure. He couldn't do a thousand of any of those workouts, so why was he even trying? It was an insurmountable task. Asking him to do this was impossible. It would take Naruto forever to get to that level. Naruto would never become a shinobi at this rate. He could barely walk, but Mike Guy brought him to a restaurant anyway. He ordered four plates of meat to roast over a grill that sat at the center of their table. Naruto was surprised. That's a lot of meat! Mike Guy winked at him. Gotta fuel those muscles. Delicious meat. Protein. You are what you eat. Eat muscle to build muscle. Naruto tried to eat as much as he could to the point where he felt like he might puke. And from there, Guy let him go home. As soon as Naruto got there, he collapsed on his bed. Guy would smile. Work hard, rest hard. Tomorrow we begin again. I'll see you in the morning. Naruto's eyes opened wide with shock at the idea that he would have to do this. The next day, Guy had him doing completely different workouts. Some of them felt awkward. Yoga, stretching, balance. Naruto ended up getting plenty of cramps. And considering that it hurt just to blink from the last day's workouts, Naruto could barely do anything at all. Despite that, Guy seemed very proud of him. Naruto didn't understand why. By the seventh day, Naruto felt like he was reaching his limit. He felt like he wasn't making that much progress at all, yet Guy continually congratulated him when he couldn't do anything asked of him. Naruto angrily slapped the ground and confronted him on this. Why do you keep doing this? You know I can never do a thousand push-ups, a thousand sit-ups, a thousand anything. You keep telling me to do it and then patting me on the back when I can't. What's your deal? What's the point of any of this? I feel like I'm wasting my time. Guy sat there for a second and sighed. Naruto, I never expected you to do a thousand push-ups. Naruto looked up in confusion. What? I gave you an impossible task. I never expected you to do a thousand of anything right off the bat. Then why did you tell me to? I was setting a goal for you to work towards, Guy said. But the point of this was to make you work out until you couldn't do another rep. It's called training to failure. You'll not grow any stronger unless you push your absolute limits. You couldn't do a thousand push-ups, only 45, and that was okay because it was your limit and you were trying to push it. The same thing for everything else. But I'm not getting any stronger. Might Guy waggled his finger. Oh, I disagree. You are. Did you count how many push-ups you did today? You did 50. That's nothing compared to a thousand, Guy Sensei. Might Guy shook his head. Indeed it's not, but it's still five more than when you started, meaning you are making progress. If you keep going, soon you'll pump out a hundred without breaking a sweat. Eventually, you'll pump out two hundred. And maybe, one day, one thousand will even be within your reach. But for now, you're doing well. You just gotta keep training. Naruto nodded. Guy continued, For you to be accepted as a shinobi, you'll need to be capable of performing a technique related to taijutsu. But the thing about that is, this technique is a high-level jutsu, so you need to go beyond the capabilities of many shinobi just to have a chance to use it. But until then, you must work yourself to the bone. Do you understand? Naruto nodded. Yes, sensei, I understand. And so, for the next few months, Naruto trained day in and day out, attempting to never complain but push himself further and further. Eventually, a year passed, and Naruto's strength was growing at a staggering rate. His training was paying off, and as he continued to train in this technique, Might Guy eventually found Naruto ready. He would then allow Naruto to take the test exam. The examiners would be informed of Naruto's situations and disabilities, but they would also be told that Naruto can easily make up for it with a better technique. 
and so they allow Naruto to try the test for the final time. They sit down and await his demonstration. Naruto is obviously nervous. The last year's worth of training was about to be put to the test to see if Naruto had grown strong enough to achieve his dreams, or if it had been a waste of time and hell for his body. Naruto would bow. He would then enter a fighting stance, wedging his arms behind his back as he raises his other hand to the forefront. First gate! Gate of opening! Naruto would suddenly open this gate. He would then begin to perform various taijutsu techniques utilizing the first one. Second gate! Gate of healing! Naruto would open the second gate, causing his movements to become a bit faster, as if vitality had been returned to him. Third gate! Gate of life! Suddenly, Naruto was enveloped in a slightly green light, the chakra flowing from his body as his skin turned a dark pink. His speed and movements were quick as he continued his demonstration. His ferocity and skill was enough to cause brows to be raised. Naruto would eventually calm down, closing the gates once more, allowing himself to catch his breath. Naruto stood there for a moment and waited. The examiners began to whisper amongst themselves. They looked to Naruto. We will need time to deliberate. Please, wait outside. Naruto swallowed and nodded. He stepped outside of the room and found his seat. Guy walked up to him. So, how did it go? Naruto looked up. I opened the third gate like we practiced, and I performed all the taijutsu techniques that we talked about, but they're still deliberating over it. He sat there for a moment. What if they don't let me pass? What if I'm expelled, Gai-sensei? I don't want all of this to have been for nothing. Guy put his hand on Naruto's shoulder. Did I ever tell you the story of my father, might die? Naruto shook his head. Guy continued. My father was a powerful shinobi who taught me taijutsu and how to open the eight gates, but he could not make use of ninjutsu. And because of that, people called him the Eternal Genin. He remained a Genin all of his life and never ascended to Chunin. People used to make fun of him and call him weak. But one day, when my squad was surrounded by the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, we were rescued by my father. Now, the seven ninja swordsmen are known to be the strongest shinobi in all of Kirigakure. Each one is as strong or stronger than the average Jonin, and heavily skilled in swordsmanship. But my father showed up anyway. I tried to warn him and tell him that he would not be able to defeat them, but he reminded me that he had the Eight Gates technique. He activated them all, including the Eighth Gate of Death. He took them all on at the same time, and he killed four of the seven. The remaining three would flee from us. My father died that day due to his usage of the Eighth Gate, but he managed to kill four of the most powerful ninja in all of the Hidden Mist Village. Do you see what I'm trying to say here, Naruto? It doesn't matter what anyone says to you. Nobody can set your limits or tell you that you'll never be good enough. Our limits are a challenge to us, and it's up to us to break those limits and become the best we can be. Naruto nodded. Guy then pulled Naruto into a hug. Listen, no matter what they say in there, you'll always be a shinobi to me, and they can't take that away, all right? Naruto nodded. The door then opened. Naruto, we're ready to make our decision. Naruto stood. He looked back at my guy. Guy waved to him. Naruto looked back. Can I bring my sensei with me? He asked the examiner. The examiner nodded. Naruto walked over, took Mike Guy's hand, and began to pull him into the room with him. Naruto stood there, Mike Guy beside him. The examiners sat and looked over their papers. Subject Naruto is not displayed adequate skill in ninjutsu to be passable as a genin. Naruto looked like he might shatter to pieces. However, the proctor said, he has displayed taijutsu mastery above the skill level of most genin, and has displayed mastery of a technique that most can never master in their lives. It is by our decision and judgment that we do hereby grant Uzumaki Naruto the title of Genin. They stood and walked over, presenting Naruto with his headband. Naruto took the headband into his hands as tears began to stream down his cheeks. Guy would then take the headband and wrap it around Naruto's forehead. Flaunt this thing, Naruto. You earned it. Taking his certificate, he would place Naruto on his shoulders and parade him through town. The shopkeeps and various citizens going about their days looked up at Naruto with disgust and shame, believing it would be the death of their village if this little hellion became a shinobi. But all the same, Naruto smiled brightly. This was his dream. He wasn't Hokage yet, but he was on the way. And even though he was but a lowly genin, the citizens of Konoha would need to offer Naruto some form of respect now. Guy would be sure to take the long way to the restaurant to force as many shinobi as possible to witness Naruto and his new position as a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf. In the past year, Guy had witnessed Naruto's growth and knew that he was far more than most people gave him credit for. He was a powerful warrior, shinobi, and with his connection to the Ninetales, he would become the Leaf's most powerful ninja without question. Once at the restaurant, he ordered whatever Naruto wanted as a celebration. As the two enjoyed their meal, Guy spoke. You know, I'm putting together my own team of Genin. I was wondering if you would like to be a part of it. Naruto was shocked. Y you mean... 
I get to be on your team? Guy nodded. If you want to, that is. I won't force you. You can choose any team you'd like. Naruto smiled, manly tears of the springtime of youth coming to his intense eyes. I would love to, Guy-sensei. Might Guy would smile. Good. Tomorrow, I will introduce you to the new team. And so the two ate to their heart's content and then made their way home. Guy would drop Naruto off by his home. Be sure to get as much sleep as you can. Naruto nodded. I'll be certain to, Guy-sensei. As Guy left, Naruto smiled. He looked at himself in a mirror, witnessing the shinobi headband that for so long he'd coveted. Now he had one, and it possessed meaning. He was an official Konoha shinobi, and soon he'd be part of an official Konoha shinobi team. He would quickly clean up and change into his PJs before hitting his bed like a rocket. Getting under some covers, he thought about how badly he wanted to sleep so the Mora would come, but his excitement was keeping him up. So he resorted to doing a brisk workout, followed by a nice glass of milk. Crawling back into bed, he smiled as he looked up at the ceiling. Hokage's office, here I come. The day after, he would wake up and make his way out to the meeting spot that they were provided, where he would arrive fashionably early. Like, a whole hour early. He even beat Might Guy. When Might Guy arrived, he couldn't help but laugh to see how excited Naruto was that he would show up a whole hour early. But together they would wait. The next to arrive was Neji Hyuga, a member of the Branch Clan, yet possessing of the skills required to be the head of the Hyuga. Soon after, they would meet Ten Ten, a girl whose jutsu specialty was summoning. Naruto would greet them all, to which Ten Ten would happily receive him, but Neji, on the other hand, was a bit more dark, a bit more of a recluse. He was heavily reserved, and it was obvious that he did not have much respect for Naruto, but all the same, they were on the same team together, so they might as well get used to it. As they went around doing their missions, which was more or less useless junk, Naruto began to grow restless. This wasn't what he was told it was like to be a shinobi. Where were the out-of-village missions? Where was the danger? Where was the fighting? When he next saw the Hokage, he was sure to respectfully tell the old man that these missions blow, and in response, Hiruzen would offer them a new mission, an escort mission out of the village. This caught Naruto's attention, to which he would happily accept it. Together, they would be tasked with escorting a bridge worker back to his village and offer protection. As they made their way back, though, they found themselves attacked by the Demon Brothers. Naruto was ready to defend himself, but before he could, Neji appeared in front and utilized 8 trigrams palm rotation to knock the two back, before subjecting them both to 64 palms. The enemy was incapacitated, but Naruto seemed upset by that. Hey, I had them! You poached them off me, poacher! Neji simply dusted himself off with a humph. They would then continue on until they found Zabuza, or should I say, Zabuza found them. He would jump off a tree and engage Team Guy. Guy would step forward, holding his team back. Naruto witnessed Zabuza's blade and realized the truth. This man was a member of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen. He was from the same team that killed Guy's father, Might Guy. He wanted to help out, but it was obvious that Might Guy was planning to do this alone. Naruto respected this, and so he stayed behind. Guy would then engage Zabuza, and the two would go back and forth in regards to the history of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen and their connection to Guy and the grudge both held against the other. Guy was capable of keeping up with Zabuza, and even to a point surpassing him. But when Guy was trapped in a water prison, Naruto thought he'd have to step in. That was until Neji stopped Naruto. He told Naruto to watch. It was then that Guy activated the Seventh Gate of Wonder. Due to this, his body began to heat up rapidly, evaporating the water prison. He then re-engaged Zabuza and managed to push him back. Zabuza would be forced to flee. As the battle ended, Naruto ran over to Guy and hugged him. Sensei, that was so great! He would look up and he saw a wide-eyed look on Guy's face. Master? Suddenly, Guy would cry out in pain. Neji would push Naruto away. Stomp it, you fool! He just used the seventh gate of wonder. His muscle fibers are ruptured, he needs rest. Tazuna would offer his own house, which wasn't far from there. Neji would utilize his gentle fist to dull the pain Might Guy was feeling, and would then requisition Naruto to carry their master. Naruto would carry him all the way to Tazuna's house, where he would lay him out to rest. They would give Might Guy all the time he required to heal. All the while, Naruto and the rest of the team would train. Naruto would train Neji to a sparring session, but Neji would simply scoff him off and tell him that there was no chance that he would ever come anywhere close to his level. This only made Naruto want to try it more, and so Neji would oblige him, if only to show him the foolishness of his request. Naruto would rush in at Neji, but Neji was there to defend. As Naruto's foot came in for a kick, Neji would simply push it to the side before tapping Naruto on the shoulder. This would cause Naruto's right arm to go completely limp. Naruto would pull back. He'd be unable to move his arm at all. 
He wasn't phased though. He was adamant about defeating Neji, so he would attack again, going in for a punch with his left hand, which Neji would push away. Neji would attempt to tap the Tenketsu in his arm, but Naruto would pull under the strike and attempt to sweep Neji's legs out from under him, which Neji would simply jump over. He would then respond by tapping Naruto again in the other shoulder, causing Naruto's left arm to fail as well. Naruto would resort to kicks, which Neji would block and dodge for the most part. He would then activate his 8 trigram 64 palms technique and strike Naruto until Naruto was completely down on the ground. Completely paralyzed and unable to move, Neji then called the match. Kneeling down, he told Naruto that he should just give up. There was no way that he could ever overtake the genius of his talent. He would leave Naruto there outside. Ten Ten would eventually find him and bring him inside to rest. The day after, both Naruto and Guy could move without issue, so they proceeded to continue with the mission, watching over Tazuna while he and the other bridge workers continued to work. For the most part, it was a lazy day without much issue. They just sat on the bridge, keeping watch. Eventually though, they were beset by Zabuza once again, and this time he'd brought Haku. Might Guy was itching for a rematch, and the same could be said of Zabuza. So those two went at it alone, while Haku faced down Naruto and Neji. Ten Ten stayed behind to protect Izuna. As they stood there, Neji spoke to Naruto. Don't get in my way. Same to you. Haku would cast his demonic mirroring ice crystals technique, surrounding the two in a dome of icy mirrors. Naruto and Neji stuck close together. As Haku's visage appeared in each mirror, they could not know for certain which one contained the real Haku. From all directions, Senbon fly in. Naruto is fast enough to be capable of dodging this, but he can't see them all. Neji can, however, and manages to weave and bob his way through. All the while, he compliments Haku. He asks if Haku is perhaps a Hyuga, as his targeting of the Tenketsu system is at about the same effect as a Hyuga, and generally requires some form of visual prowess. Haku denies this, stating that he's merely accurate. As Naruto dodges, however, he finds that he can't defend against them all and takes quite a few Senbon. Hitting the ground, Neji knows that he has to protect Naruto or Naruto will be killed. He gets close to Naruto. As more Senbon come in, Neji utilizes his palm rotation to protect them. Naruto begins pulling the Senbon out. Neji speaks to Naruto as he uses his palm rotation. He tells Naruto that he can't protect him forever and that Naruto is going to have to do something about this. He'll either have to figure out how to get out or how to defend himself because he's just wasting chakra protecting him. Naruto tells him to give him just a little bit and to keep it up, and so Neji troops along. Naruto would begin opening his gates. He starts with the gate of opening before moving on to the gate of healing and then the gate of life. Upon opening the gate of life, Naruto releases an impressive stream of chakra. This stream merges with the chakra within Neji's palm rotation, which further sends it flying out at incredible speeds, shattering each mirror. Haku's pushed back. Neji stops his palm rotation. Naruto then tells him to stand back. Naruto would rush forward towards Haku and begin the Reverse Lotus. He starts off by opening the fourth gate of pain to increase his speed as he begins to strike out at Haku from differing directions. Naruto feels as his muscles are beginning to rip open, but he continues the assault anyway. He would kick Haku up into the air where he would then activate the fifth gate of limit. He would wrap Haku up in the wrappings around his arms and then begin to spin while forcing Haku down. Right at the last second, he peels off, letting Haku hit the ground alone. Haku lays there unconscious, his mask having completely shattered from the attack. Naruto hits the ground. By this time, Might Guy has defeated Zabuza as well. He returns to Naruto's side. He would lift Naruto up, causing Naruto to cry out in pain and agony. Ten Ten is completely taken by surprise at the barbaric nature of this jutsu they use and can't believe that people made such a technique. Guy gives a light chuckle and tells him he understands his pain. At about this time, Gato's men show up to finish the job, but the people of the Land of Waves have had just about enough and stand up against him. Without Haku and Zabuza's help, there's not much Gato can do to stop the citizens of the Land of Waves, so they drive him off. Neji would tap a few pressure points on Naruto to ease the pain, and together they would all return to Tazuna's house for a while to rest. The day after, Naruto somehow is back in tip-top shape, and they proceed to return to the village. Upon returning, Guy explains everything that happened to Hirazin, as well as his team's abilities and reactions to the various trials that they face. It's then that Hirazin makes mention of the upcoming Chunin exams, and asks if that might be something he thinks his team is ready for. Might Guy would smile. He does. And I think that's where I plan to stop it for today. I always did love Rock Lee and his techniques. They were simple and followed a really easy logic. All of his techniques were ones based around physical abilities as opposed to ninjutsu, and while very limiting, I can't help but compare it to the various abilities in one of my other favorite anime, Dragon Ball. I still maintain that the Kaioken and the Eight Gates are based on each other, the concept of multiplying your power at great bodily cost. 
Perhaps not an original concept, but I always did like the idea that greater physical strength does come with a cost, something that isn't always followed anymore these days. But I digress. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know in the comments below, and remember to click that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when we release our newest videos. Until next time, peace.